Wow, hello, I'm Phil Hardin, and as probably a lot of you know, for the last few years, I've been involved with a charity called Waterloo Uncovered. This is a project which every year goes out to the Belgian battlefield where Napoleon was well and truly beaten by the Duke of Wellington in 1815. Each year we aim to reconstruct a bit of the story of that battle using the archaeology and the, and the objects that we find. But this project is a little bit special. Not only do we use archaeologists, professional people like myself, but we also use veterans and service personnel who in some way have either been physically injured or in other ways traumatised by their experiences in the armed forces. Their input is vital. They are the people who can most closely associate with the people who fought in 1815. Now, of course, this year we've been a bit scuppered by COVID. But I don't mean to say we've been idle, far from it. We commissioned a series of lockdown lectures and some, some films to actually promote and demonstrate the results of the work that we've been doing over the last few years. One of my videos alone has had 150,000 viewings. I'm humbled and impressed by the sheer volume of support and it demonstrates just how wonderful computer technology can be at reaching out to people like you. But we need to go on further. In a few moments I'm actually going to recap on some of the highlights of these lectures and films. But first, yes, I need to ask you a favour. We need to carry on with this work. There is so much more to be done. There is so much more archaeology to be done. And more to the point, there are so many individuals who need the support of the charity. For that, we need your help. So, let's have a look at some of the highlights. Don't even go there. Don't even think about it. The number of times I've had people come up to me when I've been doing this and they go, Ah, Phil, caught you napping again then. I tell you what, if I'd had a five pound note for every time I'd heard that, I'd be a rich man. The joke's worn off. Yep, I am. I'm napping flints. Just a bit of recreational napping, to be bluntly honest. Just sitting here, trying to recreate an event that happened, oh, I don't know, 13,000 years ago, something like that, towards the end of the last Ice Age, long time ago, but made by somebody that I could relate to. Funnily enough, it's exactly the same technology that the flint nappers were using at Brandon in the 1800s to make gun flints for Wellington's army at Waterloo. So this technology might go back tens of thousands of years, but believe you me, it's still relevant. When we first did our major, first major season of work in 2015, um, that field didn't have a crop in it. And it had just been ploughed, so it was accessible for us and our team of metal detectorists. So we did a survey of it, and this was the result. And we've got there, uh, red dots represent allied musket balls, that is 0.75 calibre brown bess. The blue are French, so they're the, the smaller 6.9 calibre um, Charleville musket. Uh, clear white ones are unknown most we've been able to tell what most of these are and yellow are pistol balls and as I've said in the past pistol balls clearly denote hand-to-hand -hand fighting because they're only used at very short range and there was a lot of brutal fighting in the orchard I think what I'm going to do is attempt to convert myself into um, ones and zeros and hopefully if everything goes to plan I'll see you in the uh, see you in the metaverse hello uh, this has apparently worked and this is apparently what I look like as a digital avatar. So let's get started. Right. But if we go back to our trench here, we can use this one as well to help us reconstruct the kind of location and the size of the large barn. So let's put the large barn in. Boink. There we go. And now, look at this thing. It's basically a mirror image of this one. So if we now walk down to our north gate and start looking at what an impact this barn actually has 
on the north gate, you can see that this gap that the French who broke in would have had to have come through is extremely tight. Now, if we start putting in the other buildings as well, we give it a bit of a dirty 1815 feeling here, you can immediately see and probably feel, uh, even my virtual avatar can feel this, um, how enclosed this little area would have been um, for the French. So this is actually a tiny little gap. So this is quite a tall order to try and fight through here and it's not exactly surprising that, um, that they were beaten back and then the gates finally shut. I'm sure it was a pretty rough fight there. And it typical no matter how many times or how many years I've been digging, everybody eventually wants to know, have you ever found a body? And of course, being an archaeologist for as many years as I have, the answer is definitely yes. You're always going to find a body somewhere. And, and then oftentimes the, the, the conversation goes, have you ever dug up a battle? Yep dug battles as well. I mean, I suppose just even thinking about Time Team, we did Aramanche, uh, the D-Day landing beaches, and um, well, where else? Oh, Hastings. I've even dug holes in the, in the battlefield at Hastings. Didn't find very much there. And then, of course, more recently, well, Waterloo. Um, but the one thing I've never done is actually to find a body on a battlefield. Now, I suppose the nearest I've ever come to that must have been Hopton Castle. I think it was a pretty vicious fight because we actually have the first possible evidence of conflict in our human tooth. Cool. And I sort of, I kind of imagine that there was this vicious fight between the Cavaliers and the Roundheads and that maybe it got hand to hand and that maybe somebody took a musket and took a swing at some bloke and knocked his tooth out. It's quite strange to be in an environment where people are casually using the word bomb. What we found was what we thought was a harmless cannonball, which is just a solid lump of iron, but it's the size of a 24 pound gun and <laughs> there really weren't any of those on the field here at Waterloo. So uh, towards the end of the day, we took advice from those that know better and it was suggested it might be a howitzer shell. So I went and looked at it and poked off a bit of dirt and lo and behold, there was the fuse hole. And so I immediately put into play what we would do on a First World War site if we found an unexploded shell. And I removed it to a place of safety. So I took it out of the building and it wasn't lost on me that as I removed it from the barn at Mont Saint-Jean that it was probably one of those same shells that burnt the chateau at Hougamont to the ground. So now it's your turn. Please consider helping us financially by making a donation, no matter how small, to continue our work at Waterloo. Help us to go out there and reveal more secrets about the battlefield, but more importantly, to help continue the recovery of these ex-servicemen and women. They deserve our support. Spread the word. Tell your friends. Broadcast it on social media. But spread the word. I hope to be back out there again next year. And if I do get there, I promise I'll get in touch with you. I'll relate to you how your money is being spent. And more importantly, I may be able to introduce you to some of the people that you've helped recover.